Hello students and welcome to my channel MathSAP. So I, Dr. Tanya Bose, will be talking about the Fourier sine transforms in this video. So do watch the previous videos to understand the basis of Fourier transforms and the previous video was in Fourier cosine transform. So that will help you to understand the next transform that is known as the Fourier sine transform. So to start with, let us check out what were the formulations to calculate the Fourier sine transform and the formulation to calculate the inverse Fourier sine transform. So to calculate the Fourier sine transform, we will apply the formulation under root 2 pi pi, integration 0 to infinity f of x sine alpha x dx. And to calculate the inverse Fourier sine transform, we will apply the formulation under root 2 pi pi, integration 0 to infinity, f s alpha sin alpha x d alpha right so again you can multiply the coefficient 2 pi pi in one of the integrals to balance it out but this is again the constant is a point of ambiguity so what i have done i have distributed the constant under root 2 by pi equally and i have put in both the formula so that there is no confusion where to put in where not to put in right so we will go we'll use these formulas only in the entire videos okay so let us do the first question. The question says that find the Fourier sine transform of fx equal to e to the power minus ax where x is greater than 0. So let us see how to calculate the Fourier sine transform. So the Fourier sine transform is given by fs alpha is under root 2 by pi and we will move from easy to difficult questions. 0 to infinity integral fx is e to the power minus ax sine alpha x dx, right? So as I told you in my previous videos also, that whenever we have sinusoidal functions, that is cos and sine, you can always express it as real part or imaginary part of e to the power iota theta. So we can write sine alpha x as under root 2 by pi, 0 to infinity integral, e to the power minus ax into sine can be written as imaginary part of e to the power iota alpha x dx, right? So you can take out the imaginary part out and you can write it as under root 2 pi pi, imaginary part of 0 to infinity integral. You can club in the terms. e to the power will take out minus sine common a minus iota alpha x b. So that will become under root 2 pi pi, imaginary part, let us integrate it. So when you integrate it, you will get e to the power minus a minus iota alpha divided by minus a minus iota alpha limits from 0 to infinity, right? Now when you put in the limits, you will get e to the power minus infinity which is 0 and e to the power 0 is 1. So that will become minus 1. So you will get under root 2 by pi, imaginary part of minus 1 upon minus a minus iota alpha, right? So this minus sign will get cancelled and you can realize the denominator by multiplying with its conjugate. So it is under root 2 by pi, imaginary part of a plus iota alpha and denominator will become a minus iota alpha into a plus iota alpha right so finally this is now under root 2 by pi imaginary part of a plus iota alpha in the numerator denominator will become a square minus iota square alpha square which is simply a square plus alpha square right so that will become under root 2 by pi and what is imaginary part of this term it is alpha upon a square plus alpha. So this comes to be your answer. Right? So this was a simple question, simple integration. So now let us move on to the next question. So the next question says you have to find out the Fourier sine transform of fx equal to 1 in the interval 0 to 1 and 0 otherwise. Right? So again, let us write down the formula for the Fourier sine transform. So fs alpha is equal to under root 2 by pi, integration 0 to infinity, f of x into sine alpha x dx. 
So according to the given function, we will break the integral from 0 to 1 and from 1 to infinity. So I can write it as under root 2 by pi, integration 0 to 1. And this is f of x into sine alpha x dx. And the second breakup can be from 1 to infinity f of x into sine alpha x dx. Right? So now you can clearly see that the function takes value 1 in the interval 0 to 1 and the function is 0 otherwise. Right? So that will become under root 2 pi pi 0 to infinity integral fx is 1. So we are simply left with sine alpha x dx. Right? Now, sorry, the limit will not be 0 to infinity now. The limit will be 0 to 1. Right? Now what is integration of sine alpha x? It is minus cos alpha x divided by alpha limits from 0 to 1. So that will become 2 by pi into, I can take out a minus sign common. Now cos alpha is like this, minus cos of 0 is 1 divided by alpha. So I can, you know, uh, take this minus sign inside and adjust it and it will become 1 minus cos alpha divided by so this is your answer for the Fourier sign transform. Clear? Yeah. Okay. So now let us move into the complexity now. So we have to calculate the Fourier sign transform, the inverse Fourier sign transform of f of alpha as e to the power minus a alpha by alpha. Right? Mm -hmm. So we have to calculate the Fourier inverse sign transform. So how to do it? Let us solve. Now we have to apply the inverse transform. So f of x is equal to basically under root 2 by pi 0 to infinity f s alpha into sine alpha x. And now we have integration with respect to alpha. Right. So let us put up the integral. So this is under root 2 by pi 0 to infinity integral e to the power minus a alpha by alpha into sine alpha x dl. So now here you can see that you have to do it by i late, but then there is an exponential function, there is a sine function, there is an algebraic function, right? That too in the reciprocal form. So how to solve this integral? Again, we will convert this integral into a differential equation. So let us name this integral as i. So the integration is with respect to the variable alpha. So we will differentiate it with respect to x. Right? So when I differentiate it with respect to x, what do I get? You have to study the variables very clearly, right? So e to the power minus a alpha by alpha will come as it is. What is derivative of sine alpha x? It is cos alpha x into alpha d alpha, right? So alpha cancels and I can write this term as root 2 by pi integration 0 to infinity. Again, it's a product of exponential and cos. So I can write it as e to the power minus a alpha into real part of e to the power iota alpha a, right? So this can be rewritten as root 2 by pi, real part of, I can club in the terms. This will become e to the power minus common, a minus iota x into alpha dx, right? It's not dx, sorry, it is d alpha, okay? So you have to take care of the variables very clearly, d alpha. Now let us integrate it. So this is root 2 by pi. Integration of this term would be real part of e to the power minus a minus iota x alpha divided by minus a minus iota x limits from 0 to infinity. So this will become root 2 by pi 0 to, okay not 0 to infinity, integral is gone now. So we have real part of 
let us put the limits e to the power minus infinity is 0 e to the power 0 is 1 so we will get minus 1 upon a minus iota x right along with a negative sign this minus will go and let's realize this term so this is root 2 by pi real part of a plus iota x divided by a minus iota x into a plus iota x so that will become root 2 by pi into a real part denominator is a square plus x square right so this is your di by dx so from here i can write di is root 2 by pi a upon a square plus x square dx so this is a differential equation we can integrate both ends and that will give us i is equal to under root 2 by pi a dx upon a square plus x square is 1 by a tan inverse x by a plus c so a goes off so i turns out to be under root 2 by pi tan inverse x by a plus c now the only job left is to calculate the value of this constant c so how to calculate this constant c let us put x equal to 0 now when i put x equal to 0 this equation let us mark the given equation by 1 and this equation by 2. What will 2 become? 2 implies when x is equal to 0, tan inverse 0 is 0. So i <coughs> is equal to c. And what happens to 1? In 1 when I put i, x equal to 0, then what will happen? Sine of 0 will make it 0. So i will turn out to be 0 which leads to the constant value equal to 0. So finally, what is the value to the integral? The value to the integral is under root 2 by pi tan inverse x upon a. Right? So this is your answer. Okay? So this is how we apply the knowledge of differential equations to solve these transforms. So I hope you understood the question. So thank you so much for listening to me. Have a nice day. Believe in yourself and you will definitely succeed. And do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video. Have a nice day.